Okay, welcome guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, we are about to play a show match against Tord Reklev, the winner of the European International Championships, the biggest tournament in Europe. He's playing his trademark Zorark GX Colissa Patek, and I'm going to be playing my trademark Gardevoir deck, although it doesn't have um, Sylvian, it is the Max Potion version with uh, Vulpix and stuff like that. <coughs> and right off the bat, we're off to uh, a not so ideal start because we do start the Lele. Any other basic would have been preferable, but I guess we'll we'll be fine. <laughs> Is this the Batman versus Superman movie? It's the Batman versus Superman movie equivalent to 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 Pokemon, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, I misclicked with the Kuzma. I am misclicked with the Kuzma. Uh, GG, Paskosu. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, the Kogo is menacing, for sure. The Kogo is definitely a big threat here. But I don't think I can afford to not go for, um, for the turn one Bridget. It's just that good. So I'm gonna grab the Lele. We do find that the other Lele is prized. We find that Remoraid is prized. We find that one Max Potion is prized. We find that one Bridget is prized. And one Kuzma is prized. So not terrible prizes actually, I wanna say. <laughs> I'm going to assume Tor's not watching anymore. So, we probably don't want to even bother with Vulpix. We definitely want the triple Ralts here. Double Ralts, triple Ralts. We're not gonna bother with the Vulpix. I am playing the Psychic Ralts now. And I'm gonna attach the Fairy to the Lele. Because, uh, should I attach the DC? No. I'm gonna attach the fairy to Lele because that way we have a chance to get rare candy Gallade off of the end. We could also top deck the Gallade. And we'll see how Tord is feeling because he said he's feeling sick. So we're gonna play this one game and then if he wants to do the best of three, we can go ahead and do that. I'll be happy to do so. But um But it's up to him, okay? So we'll let him decide. <clears throat> we will let him decide. Um Okay, so there's the Ultra Ball, discarding Kuzman Field Blower. Not very important cards for sure. He's gonna go for the Bridget, so as long as he doesn't start spreading damage here, and even spreading damage wouldn't be terrible, although one of that deck's win conditions is probably just bypassing dealing with Guardi or even Kalade, and, um, and taking knockouts on like Ralts or Tabuleles. So the 20 damage is actually pretty significant because it does put Lele's into Kalisapod or Zorak GX range with um, with a choice band. <coughs> so yeah, he's gonna go for the Bridget, probably checking his price cards right now. Probably checking his price cards to figure out what's priced, what's available. Um, just the regular counts. His deck is super consistent, so it should be pretty easy to figure out the counts. And he does go for the expected double Wimped and Zorua. And he does have the DC, so we really need a response to that as soon as soon as possible. Two turns of spread would actually be pretty... Wow, that is an insane, an insane top deck. That is actually an insane top deck. If Tord, you're watching this after... <laughs> That was an insane top deck. Um, I hate that I N, but wow, <laughs> the N actually gives us a pretty, a pretty good hand. Um, that was an insane top deck. That was actually an insane, insane top deck. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and premonition. Technically, I should have retreated first. Um, that was an insane top deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the Ralts at the top. 
I have an issue here where I would love to Guzman next turn one of the Zorks, however, I don't have any energy to retreat. So that's why I think benching the routes is worth it, and then I'm just gonna end up playing N. So unless our price card is an energy, we won't be able to take a knockout next turn, probably. <clears throat> so we're gonna... Yeah, so that was a pretty lucky top deck for sure. Pretty lucky top deck. And there's a Remarine, so actually we might want to bench that instead of the Ralts now. Um, there was no better card to put at the top though. There was definitely no, not a better card. Okay, so there's the first Zorark, my opponent promotes the Wimpud. So now, the only way he can deal significant damage to my Gallade is to either... Um, no, now Gallade is actually pretty safe. Two turns of spreading from Kogo does also put Gallade in range of um, Golisapod, which is actually pretty bad. Um, this is the max potion Gallade Guardi list, for sure, and I'm using a mix of Psychic and Fairy Rails now because uh, Registeel is a thing. So, and Garbodor has declined in popularity, for sure, so, so that's the reason why. Ooh, Stand-in Zorark. That actually deals perfect damage against us, so can Tord get the DC? Can Tord get the DC here? I hope he doesn't, but I would not be surprised if he does. Okay, he goes for the Enhanced Hammer, so that's probably a delay tactic, yeah, it is a delay tactic. Um, this Sycamore is actually a bit brutal, um, we do have the TCE. The damage on Golisabud here probably doesn't matter too much, um, because he has access to a ton of Aetherola. He can't directly search for the Aetherola. Um, do I want to bench the Ralts, or do I just want to keep that space open for... Oh, I definitely want to play the Supra to put back the two fairy. So, do I want to bench the Ralts or not? Um, I think I do... Do I? Yeah, I think I do, because it's also a clean route. It's not being damaged. Um... When will there be a tournament online? I don't know, don't be jello. I don't know, I, I don't personally host uh, online tournaments. And there's a timer for the code. So, quick interruption. There's a code, guys. If any of you wins it, good luck in the Burning Shadows pack. Hope you open a Guardi. Okay, so what do I do here? I can wear Candy once again into Guardi. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best play here. Um, it would be using up a lot of resources. And I would get rid of Energy and Guzma or even the Octillery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Premonition. <clears throat> hmm. Another DC would actually be pretty cool, that way I can potentially max Potion. Um, and I can also guarantee a Zorark, I mean uh, the second Kalade. Which we know is in the deck. And in case we don't end up playing the Ultra Ball, I guess Sycamore would be the ideal card. Okay. <clears throat> And then, we're going to deal 130 damage, but it probably won't be relevant. <laughs> Love the Christmas sticker on your houseplant. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, that was my, my girlfriend's idea. All the Christmassy things, um, she loves Christmas, and it's, the house looks amazing, thanks to her. <laughs> so, she's, she's around the house and... She appreciates the the fact that you guys noticed the the decor. <laughs> okay, so choice band on the wimpud. 
And my opponent goes for an end, so he didn't have a great hand. Now we will probably be able to knock out this Galissa, but... Well, never mind. My opponent 100% stand, uses stand-in here. 100%. However, we do find the Guzma. <clears throat> There's a second Zorark. Will Tord whiff the DC once again? That's the question here. That is the question. Will toward with the DCE. Okay, he makes a surprise face. So, did he get it? <laughs> Someone in chat says, Hi, Senorita Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> okay, Cross Energy on Wimpud. I think I wouldn't mind going after the Wimpud actually. I actually think going after the Wimpud would actually be the right play here. <clears throat> it's going because that way. Even if he Azer Olas off the Golisopod, that's fine. Um, I can't knock out the Golisopod with my Kalade. Because my only support card is Kuzma. So... So, so, so... What is the correct, the correct play here? I think going after the Wimpud is fine. Because that also gives us uneven prices. Going after this Zora could also be good. Or I can just retreat and get rid of the Galissa, but that way. Um, okay, my gut tells me going after the Wimpud is the right play here. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and Premonition. Parallel City could be good and is actually pretty good here as well. Uh, it's not pretty good, but it's okay. Gives us a supporter card for Kalade. So the rest of the cards actually don't matter. Um, and then I need the DC or the double fairy. <clears throat> so what's the call here? I think DC is fine. Because this also opens up the possibility of finding a knockout easier on different things. Um, I'm gonna keep the energy alive in my hand for Secret Spring. I might need it to retreat something else if Tord tries to to buy himself a turn with a Guzma. And there's a knockout on the Wimped. And we get a Bridget off of our prize cards. Which, eh, probably one of the worst prizes we could have gotten. So... <laughs> Erm, yeah. Um, thank you so much for the for the good wishes. <laughs> Table up. <laughs> um, you want to know what Christmas is like in Australia? 104 far days, no white Christmas. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't snow in Mexico City either. The first time I saw snow was in when I was 22 years old. So, it's not like Christmas is super white for us either. Uh, yeah, Tord is breaking. Definitely Tord is breaking. <laughs> if you're a Greninja, your girlfriend is a Delphox? <laughs> Maybe. Delphox is a, a magician, psychic fox kind you're of thing. You're not a Greninja. <laughs> but yeah, she says I'm not a Greninja. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, Tord's really struggling here. Tord's really, really struggling. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be here in 30 minutes. And wow, we've now broken 100 viewers. Thank you guys so much. So, Tord is really struggling to find the right energy. Um, he's even ended up discarding a second Kuzma, which is horrible for him. He finds these Zerola, pick up, picks up the Galissa, but, but that means we have a chance of knocking out the Zorark, and... Okay, he will stand in though, which makes sense. Um, this will put us again at uneven prices. Which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's okay, because Mindjack Zorark was actually the only card that could actually 
knock out my um, my Kalade. So let me think this through. I retreat, I promote Kalade, I max potion my Guardi, I secret spring onto it, and then I end, right? That's the that's the right way to go about this. So it doesn't matter because I'm gonna lose the energy anyways due to max potion. I don't want to max potion the Galade, and I mean Tord could get double puzzle to bring back this um, stand-in Zorark. <laughs> he says this game makes me want to cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the breaking. And then we end. Then we end here. I could have used the other max potion potentially. Um, we get a pretty awful four cards but we can control our top deck with premonition so energy or curlia energy or curlia would actually be good so what's worst case scenario toward brings up galissaput and attacks galade for x amount of damage or he gets double puzzle and gets this orc to take a knockout on this galade so what are the chances that we get an energy off of the next N? Um, they are slowly diminishing, so we're gonna go for the guaranteed energy. Mm, no, I guess I'll go with the Kirlia. Kirlia seems safer because we will still probably need to set up um, another Galade or another Guard of War eventually. So, sensitive blade for the knockouts. <clears throat> <coughs> And there's a Guardi. So, does my girlfriend play Pokemon TCG or VGC as well? Um, she she understands a lot about the TCG, like pretty much everything. Um, like when I'm playing and stuff like that, she knows what's going on, uh, but she doesn't actually play. Uh, she really enjoys Pokemon though. She has been she has been uh, practicing a little bit, and she really enjoys Pokemon and yeah that's her pokemon involvement <laughs> I'm a normal person. she says she's a normal person which is not a very nice thing to say <laughs> to a huge uh, pokemon twitch stream but okay <laughs> um okay there's the enhanced hammer that that also kind of delays us What's the oldest player to win a regionals or international? That's actually a pretty good question. That's actually a pretty good question. I am 29 years old and I won a regional. I hope I'm not the oldest player. <laughs> that will make me feel very old. <laughs> win for team Mark. <laughs> okay, so Tord goes ahead and takes the initiative on the Guardi. Which makes sense. That is one way to try to to win these sort of games. So, so I think setting up the Kirlia was actually a pretty good, um, a pretty good idea. <clears throat> so I do want to play the end here. The two field blowers are really clogging up our hand, and yeah, we actually don't get a good follow up to this. So we're gonna need a really great premonition here. And this is not a great premonition. Oh boy. So this is where Tord starts making a comeback here. We don't even have a supporter card to follow this up. We don't even have a supporter card to follow this up. So that's pretty bad news. Um. I think this is right. Probably. Um, yeah, like this. Yeah, so the, the space for Ralts, if it were Octillery, I think things could be different. Um, is it worth it for me to deal 90 damage? Probably not. 60 plus 160. So we need Toward to end us now. I can definitely see how we can make a comeback here. <clears throat> DC on Lele is also not ideal. 
GX attack gets a knockout. He now has triple Zora break. I mean Zora GX. Um, decking him out would also be a potential win condition here. Yeah, that is Tor Drekleth. We are playing against Tor Drekleth. <laughs> Cherbus goes through. That, that logic makes a lot of sense. Uh, do you ever buy online pack codes? No, I don't buy any online pack codes anymore because thankfully um, the, the Pokemon company provides me with an account that has all the cards. Um, Kettler has probably won regionals, yeah. I mean, perhaps I'm not the oldest person to win ever, but I'm definitely the oldest person to win, to win lately, I think. Okay, so Tord finally finds the DCE, so... He's actually in a pretty okay position here to make a, a decent comeback. He goes for the crossing cut GX play as well. And he promotes the Lele. So yeah, this is where things start getting tricky. Because we know the next five cards are not good for us. I mean, the DC is fine here. And we can Premonition. And Vulpix is now the new card, which is not great. Oh boy. So I guess we want Remorade now? Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. This is where Tord makes a comeback. This is definitely where Tord makes a comeback. With no supporter card, we can't even threaten the Galissapod. So I'm just gonna pass here. And if he goes after, if he hunts after a Tabulele GX, I'm gonna have to play the Max Potion on the other one. Um, do you test against yourself or mostly just play online? Um, yeah, I get a lot of practice from coaching indeed. And no, Kettler got second place in St. Louis. Um, I do practice a lot um, whilst I'm getting the coaching sessions done. And then I do try to grind games with um, online separately. And then sometimes I do end up playing against um, some, of my, some of my good friends. Um, Mike Fouché, etc. Okay. Um, yeah, so our tricks to draw like crazy. So if you're toward here, yeah, double puzzle is what you're looking for. Um, you want Choice Bands to, and Guzma to have back-to-back -back knockouts on the Leleys in order to win the match here. Yeah, there's a Guzma, there's a Choice Band. You also probably want to do it with Zoroark. <sighs> no supporter really sucks though. We, we ended up dead drawing, so it compensates for for Tord's bad, um, bad draws. Okay, so he's gonna go after the Lele, but he's gonna go and do it with the Golisopod. So Golisopod has 150 HP left. We do not have enough um, damage output to deal with the Golisopod. We would only deal 130, we're 20 short. We are 20 damage short. Oh boy. And now we have to deal with a 7 prize card game. Which is never good. Um, we know we're gonna top deck a Rim Raid. Which, once again, is not ideal. And then, he can actually go for an Armor Press Knockout to follow this up. So there's the Rim Raid. Now we're gonna Premonition. And nope, the new card is Curlia, so that's pretty much game. That is game for sure. If I had attached the Choice Band to the Guardi, Golisopod would have 90 damage. I would still be 20 short, because I wouldn't have the Choice Band right now. And then I'm gonna max potion to make sure my Lele survives here. 
And if, even if I if, if even if I put Vulpix up top, I don't think that would have been enough. Um, I'm playing the third place Gardevoir list. I could smack 450. <laughs> that doesn't seem good though. I'm gonna go ahead and do this to kind of threaten him a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is done. This is done. I can't t uh, knock out the Golisabot because I haven't played a supporter, so I would only be dealing 90 damage, not uh, 160. Trust me, guys. I'm. <laughs> I promise, I'm not misplaying. I promise, I'm not misplaying. Galade needs for you to play a supporter card for you to take a knockout. So yeah. Um, the game comes down to Tort's consistent deck against mine uh, less consistent deck. We still had a Seacomer left. Um, not setting up the Octillery definitely hurt us, but the Remoraid was priced. And yeah, there's a knockout with Armor Press. So there's actually no, no humanly possible way we can take the win here. And he still has a combination of one Guzma and two Puzzles to win the match. So let's take a look at what was the new card. Finally a Guzma. Guzma would have um, would have been useful much earlier on. Uh, but yeah, we can't make him deck out either. I mean, unless, unless he doesn't have like his last 10 or... Yeah, <laughs> so we did break. So I'll ask him, do you wanna make best of three? <laughs> okay, so third agrees to the best of three, so I'm just gonna go ahead and concede. <clears throat> so So yeah. I'll I'll choose to go first. I'm sure he will know that. 